All right, y'all. I found night number two's camp spot uh, up in the Cibola or Cibola uh, National Forest near Tejeras, New Mexico. I butchered that, I'm sure. Uh, so just outside of Albuquerque. Um, pretty easy to find. Uh, kind of confusing because it's near a group campground that says reservation only, but you just drive past that and get on these uh, dirt roads, and here you are. Fires are loud. Uh, there are probably some wood around the area. I got the chainsaw. I uh, don't know if I'm going to do it. I might just stick with the propane. Got my solar all ready to go, and of course I need it because the Jackery didn't charge on the Jeep because I'm an idiot and I don't understand electronics. But right when I put all the solar out, the clouds came. And I hear some thunder in the distance, so we might be testing the iCamper out tonight. All right, I'm going to finish getting everything set up. Uh, I got some interesting dinner from Albertsons. You'll see that later. All right, guys, I'm going to start getting dinner started. Uh, got my Eureka stove uh, out here with the pan and the pot. Got my American Adventure Lab little slide out with all my kitchen stuff. So normally I try to keep kitchen stuff here, recovery, emergency stuff here. So I uh, got the ARB inflator, deflator, um, the propane tanks for this guy because they won't fit here. And then a fire extinguisher, uh, jumper cables, stuff like that. Pull out my little slide fridge here, which... I uh, can't really trust those American Adventure Lab connectors anymore because the fridge has already fallen out twice on this trip. So I usually try to put my knee underneath it when I slide it out. It's doing okay now, but we'll see. Um, so tonight, I wasn't really sure what I was going to have because uh, last night was the tacos and I still have leftover taco stuff. Didn't want to do that again. So I was at Albertsons in Albuquerque and I walked past there pre-made section and I saw these guys Ugh. some asparagus with tomatoes and lemon herb butter and then some uh, Mediterranean style salmon fillets and I thought okay well that'll be pretty good pretty easy to cook uh, so that's what I'm gonna be trying here uh, tonight all right so the asparagus and tomatoes and the uh, Parmesan garlic butter they're cooking down that's gonna take a while because these asparagus guy spur gusses uh they're pretty thick <laughs> um and the instructions were for oven cooking at 425 so i turned the heat down pretty low just to let everything uh, cook down so i'm not even going to start the salmon for a good while uh right now just kind of enjoying the campsite uh sun's starting to set i'll probably launch one of the drones uh, here in a minute i already got some footage but we got some storm clouds rolling in over there Bosco over here is finally calmed down. He's already escaped out of his harness twice. No, three times tonight. He did once at the Muggy on Rim yesterday. So I'm having to keep more of an eye on him than I actually expected to have to. Uh, this dispersed camping site does allow uh, fires. They have fire rings, which is pretty neat. Um, I'm probably just gonna stick with the propane. Uh, I don't wanna go hunt for firewood and then have to get more firewood. If I was gonna be staying here more than one night and not on a moving trip where I'm driving, you know, five to seven hours every single day after breaking and setting up camp, I might have a little more energy for that. Uh, but right now it's kind of just the whole combined camping slash moving aspect of the whole thing. I got my chair and my table. That's the table I picked up in Flagstaff. Uh, it's worked out really well. It's lightweight, easy to set up, like one step and it's done. Currently charging my Mavic Air 2, refurbished, picked that up off Amazon, super cheap compared to what a new one goes for. It's charging off the Jackery 300. Skydio is right there. Um, I'm charging two of its batteries over here on the other side of the Jeep uh, with the Jackery 1000, trying to draw some of the solar power. But the trees and the clouds from before uh, starting to impede that. I tried to charge that bad boy on the AC from the Jeep today and obviously didn't work. Right now it's at 51% drawing only 5 watts so it's sustaining what it has. That's pretty much all I can say. But I'll go ahead and keep uh, cooking this asparagus down. It's starting to 
smell like asparagus and tomatoes. That's a good sign. All right, guys, dinner is done. Uh, the salmon and the asparagus with the tomatoes turned out really, really well. Uh, I gave the second piece of salmon to Bosco, who's now begging for mine. Um, so he approved. And that's really good. I don't think I've ever seen, you know, a camping or an overlanding video where they bite into their own meal and just say, ugh, that's terrible. Every single time. Mmm. That's delicious. So this could suck. And I'm just lying to you. You have no idea. Mm. But sitting by the propane fire, sun's going down. Got some uh, pretty cool drone footage with the Mavic Air 2. And then I tested out the Skydio. Uh, this time with the Beacon. So last time I flew it, or the first two times I've flown it, was just with the app, just the iPhone app. So there's three ways to fly this thing. The iPhone app, the beacon, and the standard, you know, video game controller that the uh, Mavics use. I haven't done the controller yet. The iPhone app is ridiculously easy. Ridiculous. You get to control it tell it what mode to be in and you're you know you see what it's doing you see the video feed which the controller will also do but you're actively flying it so I would say the iPhone so far the iPhone app is the best way to fly it autonomously but after you learn how to use the beacon I think that's gonna be the easiest way because the signal is stronger and you can get a further distance away from yourself so if you can see in any of the videos I've made with the iPhone app, I think the distance is whatever Bluetooth or Wi-Fi is. So that's your distance limitation. Whatever the Bluetooth or Wi-Fi limitation from your phone is, that's how far the Skydio can fly. So not far at all. Oh man, we got some salmon. The beacon is only difficult to fly because it's such a minimal interface. You know, you've seen it. It's a tiny little joystick with an LCD, black and white LCD screen with maybe six buttons, I want to say. So you have to learn and memorize the menu paths so you know what each button and then what each subsequent menu function does. Uh, but once you learn it, you know, you can do a droney, which you just double click on the white button or the blue button and it you know, shoots out from you, but also records it, uh, records your location. It's like a little drone selfie. You can gesture it to move like a wand. So if it was flying over here and I'm controlling it with a beacon, I can just not even, I don't think not even holding a button. You might have to hold a button. I think you have to hold a button. You hold a button, maybe, maybe not. And you just move your hand holding the beacon over there. And the Skydio just and stops. Ridiculous. As I wrapped up my second night, I was starting to feel uh, road weary and it had only been two days. Uh, I still had a lot of ground to cover to make it to Florida. Uh, the next day would definitely take its toll on me even further. Uh, reached the next campsite and it was about 100 degrees and humid. Uh, 